Hello folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at the Civivi Naja. Comes in black, blue, this kind of blue, and an orange G10 handle scales. And we've got a nice big blade on a pretty good sized knife. And uh, I've had this thing for about two weeks now, played with it quite a lot. And uh, I got some news for you about this thing. It's a good knife. If you want to see the full review, stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. One of the little touches that I like best about this knife is they don't splash their name all over the blade. We've got a nice clean blade here. Nothing at all on this side of the knife. And if you take a look at this side of the knife, it almost looks like nothing at all, except for in very tiny letters, right there above my finger. It says 9CR18 MOV. And uh, nothing else all over the handle, except for the Civivi logo right there. I don't like having stuff splashed all over the knives. I like this nice clean look, but that's a small thing. For some people, it's a big thing. It's just the way it is. So Civivi made this knife. It's the Naja. I already said the colors it comes in. 9CR18 MOV. Rockwell hardness of around 59, give or take. So it's a decent steal for a budget knife. Yeah, this thing runs in at $42.50 US. Uh, I got mine through uh, White Mountain Knives, and you can get it with a 10% discount. So if you take 10% off of $42.50, that means you're taking off $40. You're looking at about $38 for this knife and uh, they deliver for free to the United States and pretty cheap to Canada. And White Mountain Knives has a great history of having their knives get through past uh, customs and everything to get to the Canadian customers. So that's a really good thing. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm just saying they've got a really good history for that. Lanyard hole back here. I hardly ever use lanyard holes, but this one's placement is okay, not bad. Probably would have liked it better uh, down here at the end of the handle. We've got a fold-over pocket clip, a little less than an eighth of an inch, or right around that, sticking out of the pocket, you know, about three, three and a half millimeters, something like that. So that's a really good touch. The G10 handle scales have a nice hash texture on them. Very grippy in hand without being aggressive, not a problem at all. Uh, put your hand around here if your hands are like mine, and it just is a very good grip. My hands border between large and extra large, and see, there's room here for some more for people with extra large hands. And um, this is a big hand kind of knife, although there's some people with smaller hands who like to have a great big handle in their hands. It's just that if you understand what my hand size is between large and extra large, you might be able to uh, figure out how your hands would feel on this. At least you can get a pretty good idea. The blade is a drop point blade. You might want to call it a spear point blade because this uh, radius here is very close to this radius here, although the radius on the cutting edge is a little bit more, so it's not an exact copy. So I'm calling it a drop point with a swedge. I'm calling it a full flat grind, even though the flat comes out up to about there. Just a very minimalistic flat, but considering the depth of this, yeah, she's a full flat grind. A little bit of a forward choil right there. So you can hold it like this if you want to do some more delicate work. And uh, very nice in the hand. We've got stainless steel liners, and they've been anodized this uh, golden, uh, highly polished, coppery kind of color and uh, highly skeletonized inside. The G10 backspacer has been uh, very well made. The backspacer here has been milled on both edges, so it's not just flat across the top. You've got a tiny little bit of a, of a, a valley in the handle scales between the uh, G10 and the liners, and that happens on both sides, so that actually gives a nice texture on there. Look at that knife. We've got a flipper tab with just a little bit of jimping on it on the inside of the tab right there. 
Walk-up is solid. No blade play. Side to side, up and down. Beautiful. Alignment. Very, very nice. All pretty much perfect right through there. And here's that flipper tab when it's closed. Just a little bit of jumping on the front. So light switch method all day long. Not a problem. So works very well that way. And you can just push down and slightly back and it comes flying out as well. So like this thing, the ball bearings in here, steel ball bearings, and it just works very, very well. I have not taken this knife apart, but right now you're gonna see the insides of the knife. And here you see the knife taken apart. You can see the skeletonizing in there, a beautiful anodization, <laughs> backspacer, and you've got those nice steel ball bearings. I'll zoom in on those, and uh, that's why you get the good weight in this knife. So what do you think of that? I think it's awesome. The hardware is done very well. The screws, beautiful screws. They're inset just a little bit, and uh, there's good depth to the screws. Good hardware makes a huge difference, because if you're anything like me, you tend to take your knives apart at least once when you get them to optimize them. And I haven't optimized this one yet. It doesn't need it from the factory. It is beautiful, very smooth. Um, you just give it a little shake and it closes up on you. Detent, very, very good. Good hold on the detent. It doesn't just, you know, you can grab it even close to the end here. And I don't know if you can hear the springiness that it's making, but it's creating a vibration. There you go, that time it got open. But the detent's got a great hold on there. Not too strong, certainly not too weak. Time to do all the dimensions. We have a weight of 148 grams, 5.2 ounces. Very good for a knife this size. Uh, the factory edge sharpness, 150. Again, very good. We've got, uh, I don't usually give this, but maybe I'll start doing this. You guys tell me if you want this number or not. The uh, stop pin is three millimeters, 0.118 inches thick. So just a little less than an eighth of an inch thick for the uh, stop pin. The blade, cutting edge, so tip to the front of the sharpener's choil or forward choil, 8.77 centimeters, 3.45 inches. And from the tip of the knife to the closest spot on the handle, 9.359 centimeters, which is 3.68 inches. Uh, the Civivio website says it's closer to three and three quarter, but I suspect they're measuring up to the top up here instead. No biggie. Uh, their measurements on their website are actually quite accurate. I do all my own measurements with my own equipment, and it's pretty good equipment, so I, I like to get good numbers. Some manufacturers give terrible numbers that aren't really what the specs genuinely are, but Savivi's are quite good. The uh, blade thickness is three millimeters, uh, which is 0.118 inches. Very nice. Uh, the blade depth, this way right here at the largest point, 3.33 centimeters, 1.31 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, about an inch from the end of the sharpener's choil is where I measure 0.51 millimeters, which is 0 0.02 inches. Beautiful. Exactly what I like to find on a knife like this on the thickness. And because of this really slow slope up here, you're going to get a thin edge for a lot of sharpenings uh, as this knife goes through its lifetime. If this becomes a main user, you'll be able to use it for a very long time before you start getting thick behind the grind, even though it's a full flat grind. It is a satin grind and it does leave some fingerprints. You know, that's why I do like stone wash the best, but this is a beautiful satin grind. It looks very, very nice. Got rabbit trailed again, didn't I? <laughs> the grind angle, 19.1 degrees on the show side. That's the side where you got the Civivi logo and the working side, well, both sides work, right? Where the pocket clip is and the name, 18.2 degrees on this side. So less than one degree difference from side to side and it's very close to 20 degrees. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sharpness. On They did a great job sharpening this knife. The handle length is 12.04 centimeters, 4.74 inches. The grip area is 9.6 centimeters, 3.78 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 
uh, 1.47 centimeters, that's 0.578 inches, so just over half an inch thick right here. And then the handle depth this way is 3.58 centimeters, 1.41 inches. When you close the knife, it's 4.47 centimeters, 1.76 inches. And the total length of the knife when the blade is deployed is 21.45 centimeters, which is 8.44 centimeters. So basically eight and a half centimeter knife with a blade that's almost three and three quarter inches. Not bad, good specs indeed. The balance point is, let me put, get it on my finger here. There you go. There's the balance point exactly by that first choil, which is what I love. It's great, very wonderfully balanced. Good specs on this knife, if you ask me. Now let me show you how well it fits in the pocket. You take the knife and the way the uh, pocket clip is made right here, tries to climb right over that edge, does a very good job of it, and in the pocket it goes just a little bit sticking out. If this was a black knife, it'd be even, well, no, the blue is probably hardest to see in blue jeans, but you know, you get the black or the orange would stand out just a little bit, but very nice pocket clip. Easy to take back out and use again. This is one of my favorite knives that I've had this month. It's, it just fits my hand so very, very well. I really, really like it. We've got a little bit of jimping, not aggressive at all, but it does make a difference. It does give you a little more grip on the thumb ramp going up right there. And, you know, it just feels very, very good in hand, no matter how I hold this knife. You know, a reverse grip, you know, a reverse, reverse, which is a power cut pulling back. Uh, you know, sneak up to do some more delicate work. That forward choil back here, you know, fist grip, very comfortable. Uh, my fingers tend to land right behind here. So my, my three fingers are back here. My index finger is ahead of that pocket clip. No hot spots created from that pocket clip, not for me in either hand. And I can, you know, easily work the knife with my left or right hand. You know, I would like left-handed knives, but uh, this knife does just fine as well. And you can see I'm going a little slower in my left hand than I am with my right. It's just a little bit harder for us lefties, but I'm glad I've taught myself to be mostly ambidextrous. And, you know, it's a comfortable knife. I do wish they'd make the pocket clip right and left instead of just right. The detent in here is strong enough that I don't mind putting this in my left pocket at all. There's great protection for the tip right here on the knife. It's going to be next to impossible. You can't guarantee these things, but for this knife to open up in pocket is going to be very, very rare indeed, especially since this side is facing the edge of the pocket. There's nothing going to push on it. So I don't mind this for a left-handed guy. Good knife. Already went through the price a little bit, but let me tell you what that compares to. White Mountain Knives, I've got a coupon code called CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. Gets you 10% off anything in their store. $42.50 is the base price. Other stores have the exact same price, so why not get it for 10% off? Um, in Canadian, that's around 56, 60. In euros, that's about 37 and a half euros. In British pounds, it's right around 32 pounds. I know you guys in Europe have got all kinds of uh, value-added taxes and customs fees and stuff when you buy knives from overseas. So I'll try to put some links down below if I can find these knives on Amazon in Europe. And it, you know, just stick them down below. I've got affiliate codes with Amazon for Italy, Spain, uh, Germany, France, and Japan, UK, Australia, Canada, and the United States. So that's nine different Amazon outlets. Some of those might just have this knife. And if they do, you'll find the links down below. So unique features. I very much like this clean finish on this knife. I like the screws. The screw heads are done very well. They're deep enough and they're clean and they're hard enough. Very good job on that. This gold anodization, I have not had it chip out yet. Everything's protected a little bit. I think they've made the G10 stick out just a little bit so that the uh, liners won't get exposed to you know knocks and hard hits and stuff. You, the uh, little bit of jipping that they sort of have on the top of the liner release that might have a chance of getting, um, you know, some chips and stuff on it, but mine doesn't yet. It's beautiful. 
G10 holds up to just about anything, doesn't it? It's a beautiful product. The pros and cons, the uh, pivot is great. The fact that it's a locked pin pivot, beautiful. There's no reason why knives can't have that on all the folding knives these days. But some manufacturers still don't want to do that all the time. Um, I like the, uh, the weight for the size. It's very good. The action, the detent, very good. Uh, they did a good sharpening from the factory, so it'll be easy to sharpen this the first time it needs it. Won't need to take off a lot of steel to make adjustments. The forward choil is a really nice touch, and I like that. Um, good hardware. Good knife. Um, I said for the cons that it should have a pocket clip on both sides. I stand by that. I really do think this. it doesn't wreck the look too much for, for them to put a little bit of a spot for the pocket clip on this side. I really do think it's worth it for, you know, the lefties that are out there. We need some love. Um, and here's a pro and a con, and that's the size. Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't like to have a big knife in your hand and you've got smaller hands, well, this isn't for you. But if you like having a big handle in your hands, then it's for you. It will fit people into extra large, certainly large hands, men's, that kind of size is very good. Uh, but once you get below men's medium, you know, this may not be the knife for you. You'll have to judge for yourself depending on what you like and what you don't like. I do like the way that the uh, belly of the knife is made here. It locks the hand in very well and just gives a very comfortable feel. If you're in the market for a knife like this, check out White Mountain Knives. Actually, check out White Mountain Knives for anything and use my coupon code and you'll get 10% off of it. So that's a good deal. Thanks for watching my video. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I read all of the comments and I reply to 99% of the comments. Uh, if it's just a really simple comment, I might just hit the thumbs up for it. I don't have the time to reply to absolutely everything, unfortunately. And sometimes it takes me a few days. But uh, the channel's growing. We're getting close to our third birthday. What do you want me to do for our third birthday? A giveaway? Hey, it's my birthday. What are you going to give me? <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. That's a gift. Sharing, commenting, letting the advertisements play before the video starts. I do not do advertisements in the middle of my videos. I hate those and so I'll never do those, even though those are a big earner for a lot of people. I won't put you guys through that. So if you want to let my adverts play at the beginning, I do appreciate it. It is a nice way that you can help me. If you want to send me anything, just let me know by email, CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com, and I'll give you my address. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.